Hey boys and girls, welcome back again. Um, you know, uh, this is the new um, Chevy Bolt. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the higher version of this. It's the Bolt 2 LT. Um, its base price is uh, 34,000, uh, but this one here is uh, 38.6. Um, I've been kind of cruel or harsh on, uh, on GM because I keep hearing about cars that people either can't afford or <clears throat> don't, really, uh, don't really appeal to what I think is the market segment that they're in. But you know what? Um, I have to suck some of that back a little bit. I've seen the pictures of this, but I, did, I never really, um, this is my first real glimpse at the actual uh, car out the door. And uh, this doesn't look so bad. Now, at, uh, at 36 or 38,000, uh, uh, that kind of eliminates a lot of folks, but there is a Bolt 1 LT. And that one starts at uh, 26.6. If you take the 26.6 and, um, and the House and Senate, uh, you know, get off their tail and uh, approve the new, uh, uh, the new grants, you can take another 7,500 off and now you're at $1,900 for, uh, for this type of a vehicle. It won't look quite like this. I'm sure it's gonna be only the, uh, the very few are gonna be able to get a plain Jane because really uh, car companies don't like to build them. They, they don't make much money on them, if any. But, uh, but at, um, at $19,000, that's, um, <laughs> that's a pretty good buy. And that's kind of like what we need. We need a product that the average person can buy and it has to be built at scale. So this, this uh, product is made uh, actually just down the road from here um, in, um, in Lake Orion and and I know that that factory can crank a lot. So we're looking at a product that could probably be uh, mass produced and brought into the marketplace quickly. Now, for those of you who are thinking uh, this car is a little too small for you, there's another vehicle that's gonna be coming out called the um, Bolt um, EVU. It, it starts at 28,000, but again, you take almost 8,000 off and you're at a $20,000 vehicle. These are plain Janes again. They're gonna be hard to get, but at, at least you're looking at something that would be ballooned up a bit bigger than this and, uh, and allow you, to, uh, and allow you to, to, to buy a vehicle that you could probably get uh, three kids and, uh, and two adults in anyways. So I'm very, uh, well, I don't know, I'm kind of impressed with the, I even like the color. Um, I've already checked out the gaps and stuff like that. It's, it's a really well-made car. This is where General Motors excels. They, uh, they usually make good gaps, good fit and finish. They've been doing it for over 100 years. Uh, I'm, sure that, uh, I'm sure that there's very little that they can come up with that we haven't seen already. I, uh, from the outside, I like it. Um, let's, uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the uh, hatch here. This is um, um, this has got a gate, um, and um, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have uh, the little power stuff. But everything's kind of teeny tiny. This is a very small vehicle, uh, but they've got storage in the back here. I'll just pull this out, and then um, after you uh, after you get past that storage, you find more storage. There's uh, there's stuff down here. I'm not 100% sure. Mm, I, I'm not 100% sure I'd want to have uh, uh, too much of what's going on in there. But uh, but at the end of the day, hmm. at the end of the day, um, this has got enough uh, for uh, like I, I'm looking at this as a city car. <coughs> the um, <coughs> the uh, the long and short of it is it's <laughs> to me. It looks like a pretty good uh, a pretty good vehicle. Now there is no frunk, um, and the reason for that is because this is front wheel drive. And uh, if we let's take a well, let me open up the uh, the hood here. You can see that it's pretty much 
chock-a-block. You've got the inverter, you got the motor, you got the little uh, gearbox, all of the um, <clears throat> all of the heating and cooling. Everything is done up here. So, with a car this small, there's no real point in trying to take something that small and turn it into uh, another place for storage. And like I said, this isn't exactly what we see with the Teslas and the Rivians and the and the uh, all the other vehicles that we brought in here. Um, we're looking at a small car that's going to get you from point A to point B. This gets about 230, 250 miles of range. Uh, that gives you the opportunity to, if this is your little city car, and you live about 40, 45 minutes, uh, 40, 45 miles away from your from your uh, house to work and whatnot. Uh, if your round trip is around 40 miles, and that means you could you could drive this thing all week on a base charge. Now, the one thing that is uh, a little different about this um, is that the, um, um, the charging rate is a little on the low side. Um, Tesla is up over, over 200, and uh, this one here is at 55. So this is a little, um, uh, gonna be a little inconvenient, but uh, this might be the kind of thing that you'll charge up at home. I mean, why would you go to a charge station um, if, uh, if you're only using it to commute back and forth to work? Why would you, uh, if you're gonna have a long trip, this would be a, a bit of an issue. But for me, uh, this looks like a perfect kind of a vehicle that you could go from point A to point B and, um, and uh, you know, get your groceries and things like that. And for a starting family that wants to go EV, this, this is not a bad idea. Anyway, let's um, let's have a look at the interior a little bit, and then uh, and then we're going to put it up on the hoist. Well, I can tell you right now, ingress and egress is good. Um, it's uh, it's going to be the door is relatively big for the front. Um, uh, I don't know what giant was in here before, but. Anyway, the controls seem to be uh, in a good way. I don't have the keys, so everything's not popping up. But the uh, but at the end of the day, there's a limited number of buttons, which I kind of like. Um, it has a but individual buttons for the uh, Prindle. So there's park, uh, reverse, um, neutral, drive. It's a uh, hmm, different. Uh, personally, we're getting to the points where I, I think pretty soon we're going to see all this stuff disappear and there'll just be um, a little knob or something. Uh, but uh, but the inside looks uh, looks pretty nice. It's a huge windshield. Um, that's why they've got these giant windshield wipers. Um, it looks it just looks nice. It looks uh, very sculptured. Um, chiseled almost. Um, maybe we can, uh, I'm going to be taking this thing home for the weekend and trying it out. So I'll, I'll have more information later on. But uh, the seats are relatively comfortable. I mean, this is their high-end version. So you'd expect that the seats would be nice and comfortable. And uh, fit and finish on the interior here uh, is... I mean, it's good. It's there's nothing, uh, nothing bad I can say about it. <sighs> okay. Well, I found out that yeah, there's a power button. Um, okay. Um, I I've been criticizing this for a while, um, and it's of course hidden. Okay. So you you have a key fob. Uh, I just so I just got the key fob, and um, now we can have a look at what's going on. Now we can see the uh, the instrument pa an instrument panel and um, and the uh, information uh, I don't know what you'd call it info uh, info videos or whatever. So let's uh, let's just uh, let's just see what we got here energy. So this is quick and easy to let you know what's going on. You got music. Here's your home button so that you can uh, you can pick out whatever you want. Let's just uh, see what they got for music. 
uh, no satellite signal so you can connect your phone this is uh, going to be navigation I'm assuming so it's got OnStar which is General Motors and then what do we got here oh and this is uh, for energy so quick and easy easy to get to um, not sure why we've got buttons here buttons there and then buttons at the top I guess uh, they're trying to get everybody trying to satisfy everybody in marketing I guess but it, at the end of the day um, looks pretty good it looks uh, it looks pretty good indeed yeah wow so far I'm pretty impressed let me try the back seat Let's see what we got back there <clears throat> So, um, there's enough room for me in here. So if you're an average sized person, um, this would be, uh, this would be just fine. Uh, you got a big guy and, um, he's going to, he's going to be a little cramped in here. Um, <clears throat> pretty standard here for, uh, armrest, cup holders kind of stuff. All in all though, I got plenty of headroom. So what I'm trying to do is have a look at this car that I've got, which is the luxury version, and think about what it's going to look like when I see the um, the One LT. And I think that the One LT is going to be just fine. It'll probably have cloth seats. It'll probably um, not have as much chrome and whatnot. But still, in all, I think that this is going to be a pretty good buy. I'm. Uh, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with what General Motors has got out here today. Uh, so uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is pretty good. All right, we're gonna take and put it up on the hoist so I can have a look at what the suspension looks like, and then, like I say, I'm gonna do a ride and drive over the weekend and tell you what I think. So let's uh, let's get it up in the air. Okay, so we're underneath the bolt now, and uh, <clears throat> there isn't much to say. This is about as uh, inexpensive as you can get. Um, the only thing that's really unusual is, uh, is this A-arm, which is um, uh, forged aluminum. Normally, I would expect if somebody goes into the cheap mode, uh, you don't usually see this. You'll see a casting. Not only that, this one actually is machined, has internal uh, uh, lightning holes machined into it. So the, the suspension here is been around for a million years. This coil over shock. This is a McPherson strut. Um, there's no fancy, uh, nothing fancy on this at all. Everything here is about as uh, about as simple and as inexpensive as you can get. I was expecting inexpensive because, quite frankly, the car itself is inexpensive. So uh, from up front, uh, no big shocks, no. No, uh, no dramatic uh, engineering to talk about, so it's kind of easy peasy. The one thing I'm it just occurred to me is that it has probably the smallest uh, disc brakes I've seen in quite some time. I'm just wondering why we're not, uh, because everybody's doing regen and things like that, why aren't we looking at drum brakes and bringing those back? Uh, they're less expensive and uh, and they would be good enough, I think, in the situations we've got now. Let's move to the back. Um, you can see that it's got a, a pretty nice undercarriage from a pass-by standpoint. This will make very little noise. And then we get back here, and uh, again, this is about as inexpensive as you can get for a rear suspension. It's called a twist beam. Um, it's not a, there's nothing extraordinary about it. Um, it's basically, it is a basic, a basic system that you use on a small, um, inexpensive car. There's, like, there's not much to say. This is one of the ways that you keep the cost down, uh, is by using this type of a system. So uh, huh, that was quick and easy. The one thing I will tell you, though, is um, in looking at the way this is constructed and knowing where all the weight is, I think this is going to be an exciting, uh, exciting ride. I think this is going to give me a different kind of a, a different kind of a ride. So I'm taking it home on the weekend, and I'll let you know what I thought of the vehicle ride and drive uh, 
uh, in the in the next uh, in the next video. So stay tuned. There's more to come.